Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is our first video now dealing with the normal probability distribution, probably the most common probability distribution out there. Uh, I, I would assume, I would predict that even before taking this course you've probably heard of the bell curve, right? The bell curve for exam grades or, you know, uh, professors curving the grades or something like this. Uh, it pops up all of the time. So here we'll go through this exercise, and uh, I might actually split this problem into two videos, one for A and B and one for C and D, uh, because before I get into it, I want to talk a little bit about the process uh, involved and uh, maybe some helpful tips in trying to solve these problems. So uh, here we're looking at just something from my own recent experience, uh, writing exams. So when I write an exam, I have a class time, it's generally 75 minutes for one class. I need to write an exam that is challenging, is difficult, and it covers all of the relevant material, but I have to ensure that students will have the opportunity to finish the exam within the allotted uh, time. So uh, what I often do, if I have 75 minutes, I'll try to shoot for an exam that will have an average of about 65 minutes. Um, but, you know, there's that distribution around that completion time. There's some who finish very early, there's some who take a lot longer to, to complete the exam. So, assume that it's normally distributed. Uh, my most recent exam, I had a completion time, an average completion time here of 64 minutes and I had a standard deviation of 7.28 minutes. So we're basically, we're describing the, the location and the shape of a distribution. So what I want to do, any time, and there will be a lot of times, when we're working with this distribution, we are often working with two distributions at the same time. There's this one, your normally distributed variable. In this case, this is my variable of completion times. So it's normally distributed. It has a mean um, mu uh, of 64 and a standard deviation, in this case, of 728. So that tells me where is this distribution located. Uh, that's the mean. This is a measure of location. Uh, and here the shape. Is it uh, short and fat or tall and skinny, right? A high standard deviation um, implies there's a wide range or wide variance of observations around the mean. So if standard deviation is high, then we're going to have a fairly fat distribution. If the standard deviation is low, then we'll have a much skinnier distribution. So this is our distribution of observations. Now, what can we do with this? Mm, maybe not a lot, but what we can do is use the standard normal distribution, which looks something like this. The shape is the same, uh, but its parameters are different and its parameters are fixed. So this standard normal, I'm going to abbreviate it, standard normal distribution, is defined by the distribution that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. This distribution, we know all there is to know about this distribution. Well, I know all I need to know about it anyways. I'm sure there are people out there still learning more. From here, we can get all of our probabilities um, that, that we'll ever be interested in when dealing with these, these types of problems. Basically, what we are doing is from this distribution of completion times, I draw some value of interest. And in this case, if we look at part A, we're saying what is the probability of completing an exam before the end of class? Okay, so end of class is 75 minutes. So from this distribution of completion times, if this is 64 here, then let's say 75 is up here somewhere. So there's our 75 minute marker, there's our value of interest from this distribution of completion times. So what I want to what I want to know is the probability of uh, completing the exam before the end of class. So the probability of it obtaining values from that distribution less than or equal to 75. That's 75 minutes, that's our end of class. And x is the completion time, a student completing the exam. Uh, before 75 minutes is up. So what can I do? Well, 
Not a lot. What I first need to do is what we say standardize or normalize that value. And so here's where that's coming from, standardize or normalize. We need to convert this through this fairly simple formula. Convert that, there's a sigma, convert that into a what we call a z-score, which is going to be, I don't know, somewhere up here. There's a z-value. Convert my value of interest from my distribution of observations. Convert that into a z-score. And now I can look up the probability of obtaining a z-value from the standard normal distribution less than or equal to whatever is that specific value. So uh, the mechanics are fairly straightforward. It's a, it's a straightforward calculation that we need to do. And then all of the probabilities, as I said, we've got lots of information about the standard normal distribution. So once I have that Z score, I can go to the tables, the Z tables, and I can look up the corresponding probability. So for this exercise, my Z value, if I plug in our numbers, my value of interest here is 75 minus my mean is 64 divided by my standard deviation is 7.28. So if I pull out my calculator, uh, let's move that out of the way here. Oops. So 75 minus 64 equals 11 divided by 7.28. So there's my value of 151. So this is 1.51. This was 1.51. And coming up here, I want to figure out what is the probability of obtaining a z value less than or equal to 1.51. So th the implication here, and it will become more important as we progress through the, through the videos, is that for any value in this distribution, there exists a corresponding z value in this distribution. So we can always switch back and forth between each of these, these two distributions. And later on, uh, that will become increasingly helpful to be able to do. So what's our next step? So now I need to figure out the probability less than or equal to 151. Well, just like our uh, uniform probability distribution. Probabilities now are obtained by determining or calculating the area under the curve. So if I want to know this probability here that corresponds with completion times less than or equal to 75, then the exact same thing would be calculating the area to the left of the corresponding z-score at 1.51. So now we can go to our z-tables. Uh, oh, I've got some remnants in here. We go down to our z-tables, and there I've already got my numbers in. Spoiler alert, <laughs> z is equal to 151. So we go through the first, first step is to look down that first column, and we find the first two values of our z-score. So here we're looking for 1.5. So there's 1.5. The next, the second decimal, so here's point oh, uh, this is B point zero 0.01. So here's that point zero 0.01 up here. And then where those two come together, come down here and over here, and there's my probability of interest, 0.9345. Notice at the top of my page, this says it's giving me lower tail probabilities or cumulative uh, probabilities. So in this case, I'm always getting lower tail values, and this is for both, whether I have a negative test statistic, a negative z-score, or a positive z-score. So this is giving us, in this case, exactly what we want. And so with the number of 0.9345, here I have 0 0.9345. So that area to the left, of my value of interest is equal to 0 0.9345. There's my probability uh, that a student completes the exam before the end of class. Good. Part B, 
what is the probability that a student will fail to complete the exam before the end of class? So here we're looking at the complement of, of the, you know, the, the event. We either finish it on time or we don't finish it on time. Well, if this red shaded area represents the probability of completing it before the end of class, well then the complement to that would be, here's that probability of completing it after the end of class, or in other words, not having enough time, which that corresponds to our standard normal distribution up here as the area under the curve um, in that standard normal distribution. So in order to obtain that, if I now want to figure out the probability that z is greater than 151, well, the area under the curve is equal to 1, I know that this red area is equal to 0.9345, so this is equal to 1 minus the probability of it being less than or equal to 151, which is what we've already calculated here. So this is 1 minus 0 0.9345, which is equal to, oh, my calculator is always in the wrong spot. 1 minus 0.9345 equals 0 0.0655. So there's this area under the curve, 0 0.0655. And that's the probability that a student fails to complete the exam before the end of class. Okay, so I hope that that was helpful. As I said, I'm going to break this up into two videos. I'm already over my... Uh, 10 minute mark going on 12 minutes here. So I'll, uh, I'll clean this up a little bit and then we'll start off again on part C. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.